So you're thinking of moving to Fort Worth, Texas, but you don't know exactly where you want to live because you're unique, you're different, you've got a lifestyle all of your own, and you want a living situation that matches that lifestyle. Maybe it's away from this hustle and bustle like we got back here, or maybe this is the kind of thing that really gets you going. It doesn't matter. We're going to be covering everything you could possibly imagine as far as lifestyle living options go in Fort Worth, and then some, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jack Lizenby and together with Tom Jung, we are your local DFW real estate agents. We get calls every day from folks just like you looking to buy or sell. So whether you're a few days or a few months away from your move, go ahead and give us a call. We've got links down in the description for Calendly so you can schedule a call at your leisure. Or if you want to hit us up right now, we've got a phone number down there and this time it works. I promise we had that messed up earlier. So I apologize to anyone who tried to reach out earlier. The middle three numbers are 233, not 223. Uh, but suffice to say, we we are actually just outside of our new office park. So we recently made a switch over from a uh, little office off of Vickery Boulevard. And now we are in the heart of downtown right off of Summit Avenue. And um, I bring this up because we had to make a couple of changes in our our location and our living situations in order to accommodate this change in scenery. And it got me thinking, how many people have to make these kind of life changes whenever they go to move? How many people are compromising on what kind of lifestyle they enjoy because of where they're living? And I think that that is abhorrent. I hate the fact that you, that people are out there having to suffer for the fact that maybe they have to live close to work. Maybe they're, you know, neat, nose deep in the inner city and they really want to live out in the country and like that kind of sucks. Maybe some of those people don't realize what kind of options there are around Fort Worth because it's a big city, but people think city and they immediately think like high rise buildings and traffic and it's not all like that and I wanted to showcase some of those in today's video so we're going to be covering everything from inner city living to things like condos apartments townhomes all the way down to single family homes in the country out in uh like Bella Crossing or out past city limits and even some unique different lifestyles in between uh we're going to be covering some lake living we're going to be covering some uh um oh god what else is there probably you know, suburban housing. There's plenty of that around here. Don't worry, we'll cover that too. But just stick around because we got a lot of really cool examples and things to show you guys. So downtown, downtown is a completely different beast. There are loud noises. There's always something moving. We got cars, we got people, we got construction. There's weird smells every now and then. Uh, <laughs> I get it. It's not for everybody, but I can say this with the utmost confidence. You will find some of the most fascinating stuff and you will never be bored in a downtown metro like this. So especially with Fort Worth, whenever you come downtown, you, I mean, everything seems to be focused around uh, some really big landmarks. Like we've got the Bass Music Hall, we've got Sundance Square, there's the the chase building so there's there's plenty of big things that'll help you find your way around but i think one of the things that people really uh, focus on is things to do and there's plenty here so we've got shops we've got restaurants there's activities there's like three or four different comedy clubs just in this downtown area alone uh, and on top of that we have all sorts of vibrant beautiful architecture styles from different centuries from one street to the next, nothing is gonna be the same. And I realize that takes a certain type of person to, uh, to not only be able to live in that environment, but also appreciate it to the appropriate degree. But for those individuals who are looking for something like that, Fort Worth is hands down one of the best. We have architecture from hundreds of years ago all the way up to modern day. There's still building in downtown. Believe it or not, there is still real estate available uh, in this area and they are snagging it up with a fervor to put together some really cool places to live and really cool things to do. And we're going to check out some of those here in just a bit. So as I listen to this bus drive past me, uh, a lot of you guys might be thinking, why would somebody want to live downtown? And I'll tell you this, the biggest reason that people would want to live downtown is convenience. Uh, and that may seem like a weird thing with the advent of traffic and, you know, a grid road system or something like that. But honestly, when it comes to convenience, there's no other place than downtown. Hands down, um, you can access 
basically anything at any time of day when you're living this close to the city center. You have these high-rise buildings with all sorts of industry on the first floor. You have office spaces uh, where a lot of the actual business is done on a day-to-day -day basis in the city. You also have access to living spaces at the same time because these high-rise buildings, they're not just there for show and blocking wind. These guys, they usually have some sort of like retail or, or a restaurant or something that's making uh, street-level money with tourists and just foot traffic in the area. And then as you go higher in the building, you're either going to find yourself with office space or you're going to find yourself with condominiums, which are the main uh, mode of living in this area. So as you get closer to downtown and resources and, uh, and real estate get more scarce and people start building vertically, an easy way to integrate living situations is to put condominiums in a lot of these high-rise buildings. Uh, they're economic. It allows for a uh, good use of common spaces where you can get these really high-end facilities for a lot of people. Uh, who may only need to use them like maybe once or twice a day. So honestly, it's not a bad idea if you're, if like, especially for bachelors or small families or people who work is really a priority for them. Downtown living is honestly the way to go in a lot of cases. Um, and that may be a shock to some of you guys, because as you see these cars rolling around behind me, that may not necessarily be a draw. And if that's the case, that's okay. We're gonna have something for you as well. Just stick around. So maybe the downtown living scene, that sounds like you. You're like, Jack, yeah, all those things are great. I'm a workaholic. I don't have a lot of responsibilities. I'm free to move around. And I wanna spend most of my money on me. Well, hey, by all means, I'm right there with you. But the idea of a condominium, it scares you. You're like, man, I don't want a condo. I don't wanna deal with an HOA. I don't wanna be dealing with shared walls with neighbors. And I'm gonna stop you right there because that's not necessarily all condos. There's plenty, there's a lot of different definitions for what a condominium is um, as far as like a visual appeal style goes uh, in this case like with downtown yeah of course we've got the high rise style condos where you're sitting on like the 17th floor and you can hear your neighbor screwing in the room next to you and then we also have different styles of condos where you're in a uh, almost like a community apart from the other buildings where it's just a living situation maybe you got to share a courtyard or an atrium or something like that but it's not as tightly packed and then the that allows for a lot of different living situations for a lot of different people who may need to live this close to the city center. So if the idea of having to take an elevator to get to where you live doesn't sound super appealing, don't worry. There's plenty of options when it comes to living spaces. Just because we slap the label condo on it doesn't mean you have to suffer. Wow, that is bright. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what they say, everything's bigger in Texas. We have more landmass than 49 of the other 50 states, but that also means we have much longer commutes than the other states. Uh, you can drive eight hours on a straight line and still be in Texas. And I think that's a, something that might be a bit trepidatious for a lot of people who are considering moving here. When they are putting together their finances, they may have not considered the fact that they're gonna have to invest in some sort of personal transportation to be viable in a lot of places in Texas. Well, downtown is one of the great exceptions to that issue. Uh, that a lot of people may face moving here from out of state. We do actually have public transportation in the downtown area and the way that Fort Worth is shaped since it's almost like a hub and spoke style um, infrastructure. You can basically get anywhere you need. Speaking of, there's a bus and bus station over there. Uh, you can get basically anywhere you need within the city from downtown fairly easily. Uh, so that is definitely one of the problems off of your plate if you're thinking of moving to the Texas area that you wouldn't actually have to, uh, or I'm sorry, that you would actually have to deal with if you were thinking of moving somewhere a little bit more rural because those drive times add up and you can't necessarily take a 30 minute drive and turn it into a comfortable walk into the store. But in downtown, you can. So talking about downtown living may be a little bit frightening for some people because maybe you do want to be close to that city center. Maybe you do want that kind of accessibility. Maybe you do need those kinds of amenities. Maybe you just work there and you don't like to drive and you don't want to live in a high-rise apartment. Maybe you don't want to live in a condo or something like that. Well, I do want to say, first off, Fort Worth is huge, uh, just like everything else in Texas. And I think a lot of people misunderstand exactly how big Fort Worth is because whenever you look at Texas, the only thing you see on that map is Dallas, Austin, and Houston. You don't ever see Fort Worth because it's kind of standing in the shadow of its older brother, or rather its younger brother, I should say. But uh, the, the uh, fact is Fort Worth is huge and the downtown is equally huge. So the um, while the city center may be 
rife with high-rise buildings, that doesn't mean that it stops where the high-rises stop. Uh, there's plenty of down, downtown Fort Worth that isn't necessarily just shops and skyscrapers. As a, actually, as a great example of this, I'm walking actually right next to these awesome red brick uh, apartments. These are like maybe three, they're like three stories tall. They've got brick siding. You got a natural stone water line over here. Cool little accents and whatnot next to the door and balconies. So there's plenty of different living situations to choose from if you do need to live in the downtown area and you need those kind of conveniences, but you don't want to live in basically a business park. Um, and that's fair. I get it. I live in an apartment. Uh, it's a nice way to live, if you ask me. Low maintenance, nothing you really need to worry about. And they're generally in pretty convenient places. This one, actually, if I give a quick little pan around, as you can see, we've got like downtown proper down this way you see we've got like some high-rise buildings over here there's some more stuff just around the corner here and then we've got this right on the edge of this road and as you can see i mean the sun's kind of blowing it out a little bit but it gets a little homier and this is just right on the edge of downtown you can have all of this and not be in the thick of it all and i think that's one thing that people don't understand when they're thinking about city living when i first moved here back in 2020 now hasn't been all that long i've been in the dfw metroplex for a minute but i left for the military and ended up coming back when i came back in 2020 uh my girl she worked in the city center so i know that finding a place to live with a decent commute into downtown was really difficult because we didn't want to live downtown we didn't want to be right in the thick of it whenever we got off of work at the end of the day and i'm sure a lot of you guys are like that and so there's so many people who are looking for places to live with the amount of industry that's moving into DFW in the recent years, it's becoming harder and harder to find a good piece of land or a good place to live that isn't too crowded or isn't too, you know, isn't too much of something that you don't want. Uh, and so the insight of a local can be really invaluable to a lot of the people who are considering this move, be it for, you know, work or pleasure or just for vacationing, visiting family, whatever. Uh, and I really like the opportunity to impart that knowledge on you guys because that was something that would have been very valuable to myself whenever I first decided to make the move back to Fort Worth. That being said, in my journey to find a good spot to live, I actually ended up running across a lot of other cool options that weren't exactly for me, but whenever I saw them, I was like, you know, there's a specific type of person that this place is for, and I would really love to be able to help that person out because we have man i think the statistics say we're going to be like 88,000 housing units short by the end of next year or something like that we have so many people moving here that there's just not enough houses for them uh and while that's unfortunate it also means that it's becoming more and more difficult to find a lot of these hidden gems so hopefully this video can help those people out and <laughs> make their process a lot smoother uh i also kind of wanted to point out this right back here another cool little story not not really anything important just you know because we were here this building back here is where uh tom actually had his wedding uh <laughs> just figured i'd throw that in there i think it's a cool looking building let me see if i can get a better view of it for you guys like yeah just look at that the kind of architecture and stuff like that uh i think it's more of a venue kind of thing now than it was um originally but i'm pretty sure it was like an office building or something like that but these are like the kind of things that i like showing off about fort worth because we have uniqueness in downtown and as you go further and further out the history and the architecture and the culture of fort worth really pops and so some of these places that we're going to be showing you guys have a lot of that inspiration and that that influence in their design um and so not everything has to be that big square gray blocky grossness that seems to be infecting everything since the mid 2000s uh there's still plenty of cool stuff like this to go check out and that's what we're hoping to show you guys today so here in fort worth downtown means a lot of different things it doesn't necessarily mean it's all high rises and buildings with big logos on them or anything like that uh, sometimes it means that you live just outside of that maybe you need that accessibility maybe you need the public transportation the facilities that downtown brings but you're not ready to live in a 50 something story tall uh, uh, corporate building well i think a great compensation or a compromise i should say for those situations is 
going to be something like Montgomery Plaza. So what I'm going to do here, as you can see, this big building behind me is Montgomery Plaza. It's got a couple of different layouts. We got like a shorter end over here, slightly taller end over here. But this thing's actually really cool because what it is, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven story tall building with uh, a bunch of restaurants and shops and like a little escape room, uh, a couple of game type shops at the bottom floor. And then it's condos from the second story up. And they're really nice condos as well. You get a good view because there's a bunch of low rise buildings around here. Like if I take a quick swing around, you can see how close we actually are to downtown. Right at the end of that street right there, you can see some of these high rise buildings popping up in the background and everything like that. We're still really close to all of that. And most people would still consider this downtown. They would call this, uh, the, since we're at the end of West 7th over by University, a lot of people call this the business district or the cultural district, district depending on what section you're in. But honestly, it's a really nice uh, place to live. And Montgomery Plaza, I think, is a perfect example of that because it's a community in and of itself. They have awesome condominiums with great facilities. They have like a rooftop pool. Like I said, you've got all those shops, bars, restaurants, um, things to do on the bottom floor. You really don't have to go far at all. And if you're looking for walkability, there's this second to none, like hands down, because here you can see Montgomery Plaza here as I turn around, just on the other side of this little shopping complex, all of this back here, you have a Target, you have a Walmart, you have, uh, there's like a, a Bank of America, there's a bunch of smaller shops and things like that, um, just along the edge there. It's like a little strip mall area back there. So you actually have access to even more shops than just what the Montgomery Plaza building itself has. And on top of that, just across this little railway section here that you can easily get around, we have like a Tom Thumb. There's like a, a burger place back here. Tom Tons of stuff like you can easily walk like I've been doing all this filming and whatnot in this area and I've been easily able to walk around all of these different areas to get the footage to show you guys I apologize the wind picked up there a little bit but suffice to say like if you're looking for something that's that's a good in-between uh, not quite suburbia and not quite you know hyper industrial America this is awesome this is an awesome spot right here and I've got another one here that's actually just a hop skip and a jump up the road that I'm really excited to show you guys about as well so We've been talking a lot about the living situations in downtown, and most of it seems to revolve around condos, condos and condos. Uh, and I know that's not necessarily everyone's bag, so I wanted to really uh, take a second to sit down and talk about the other prominent option when it comes to downtown living. And as you'll see behind me, this doesn't look like downtown, which I think is probably the best part about this area. This is Linwood Park, the heart of the Linwood area. This is just on the edge of what we would consider downtown Fort Worth, uh, maybe like a street over from the Montgomery Plaza whenever you look at the area as a whole. But the vast majority of the houses that they have in this area are actually townhomes, which is a big step in the residential direction for a lot of people who are looking at downtown living and honestly these are really nice we've gotten we've helped several people move into this area I've had nothing but great things from them uh, as far as living in these areas go it, typically a lot of the people who live in areas like Linwood are gonna be uh, what we've noticed it seems to be a lot of like doctors nurses uh, like working professional type individuals and honestly I feel like with that dedicated mindset that comes with those industries these guys have definitely made the best of the Linwood area as well because it's very well maintained it's very quiet as you can tell like there was like one car that went by just a second ago I'm I'd be surprised if you even really heard it it's a little windy at the moment but all in all like it's a really nice place to be you got this great little park which is the heart of what I would call the Linwood area there's uh, townhomes that are maybe like two units apart or two units a piece and then there's usually space between them you might have a couple of three or four unit uh, townhomes but for the most part you may only have one shared wall with your neighbor to your right or your left um, so if if more individualized living is something that you're looking for and you still want to be in the downtown area this is honestly the spot to be there's there's a couple of holdouts in this area who still have single family houses but they're slowly developing it and I think this whole area is going to be townhomes but all, all in all uh, the fact that it is an HOA and it's a newer area and the visibility of this area I have a feeling that this is going to be a very well taken care of neighborhood for years to come. 
Right, so rural is a completely different animal, and rural means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, because I know a lot a lot of what people think of whenever they think rural living, they're probably thinking like farmland, maybe like a, you know, off the grid living, you've got like collecting rainwater, you've got a, you, a maybe a well or some septic, you live in a, anyway. So it, it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but I wanna say that like, it doesn't necessarily have to be that crazy prepper lifestyle just because you live outside of the city. There's varying degrees of what we would call rural. Um, and this is, I think is a great example. So as you can see behind me, we've got all these really nice houses. They're not really close to each other, but they're still really good quality on big pieces of land. This is Bella Crossing. So Bella Crossing is a section of Bella Ranch, which is a master plan community over here, just past Benbrook on the 377 south of Fort Worth. And it's really nice. So you've got um, all these really nice houses like upper 2000 usually over 3000 square feet they're like four or five bedrooms they've got these really nice common areas kitchens all that jazz um, we're actually going to take a look at one of those here in a little bit and you'll get to see it it's pretty cool um, but it's suffice to say uh, you can this is what i would call like diet rural or rural adjacent because you're not quite you're not in the city you don't have that smell of smog in your nose 24 7 or anything you don't have to worry about hearing traffic there's not a ton of noise or anything but you still get a a lot of those creature comforts that comes along with it as well as the accessibility and amenities of living in a suburban lifestyle so you can still get that nice um, that nice prim proper neighborhood feel without it being too cookie cutter and still having a little bit of elbow room for you and the kids. Um, we just did a walk through of a uh, house that's on the market right now. It's not a new home. It was a pre-owned home, but I, I think it's a really good example of the type of architecture and floor plan that you can expect even out of outside of city limits. So um, like I said, one of the biggest draws of moving outside of the city is being able to do anything you want with your property without having to worry about like zoning regulations or pressures from like your neighbors uh, like you know maybe you want to put a shop up on there because you're really big into working on your car or maybe you play drums and you don't want to have to worry about keeping the neighbors up at night or anything crazy uh, being being further away from your neighbor can have a really big draw and you're it lets you do a lot of really cool things with your property and I think these guys really knocked it out of the park with what they did this this house honestly was um, a sight to see so you had they had like tray ceilings in the kitchen with these nice decorative inlays, this awesome backsplash, this crazy bathroom setup. Um, it was really cool. So I'll give you kind of like a verbal walkthrough and we'll have some B-roll footage on screen as well. Um, but basically you walk in and the first thing you see are these two big iron doors with these nice big pane glass windows in them. And then to your left, you have a cool, um, this cool office setup with these big windows off to the left there at the front of the house, these nice built-ins in the back and everything. And all all of that opens up into the common areas where to your left you have the living area which is really well done you've got like this wood grain tile covering the hearth which goes from floor to ceiling decorative beams going across the ceiling itself the kitchen like i said you get that really nice decorative trace ceiling as well as a butler's pantry off to the right as soon as you're walking into it the oversized island with a farmhouse sink gas appliances under and over lighting on the cabinets you get a a, a, a dining nook area which has its own built-in cabinetry with that same under and overhead lighting um, the master bedroom honestly is really nice too high vaulted ceilings you get a fireplace in the master as well um, and the master is just right across from the garage so you're not far from your laundry room or anything like that either uh, the master bath though that's what really blew me away so going through this thing was really cool you get an oversized double vanity um, dual overhead lights and everything uh, but the the shower it eats up like half of the bathroom and that's not a bad thing this thing is spectacular so uh getting a look at it it had like a half glass shower wall it had like three shower heads a shower wand it had like a bench it had like decorative inlays and tiling and everything like that and then it was right next to this oversized closet which i've only seen this one other time and it still blows me away to see it they had a they had an island in the counter with like or i'm sorry an island countertop with or in the uh, closet itself so you walk in and the outside of the closet is ringed with like you know hanger rods and, and shelving and all that jazz and then in the center you just have this oversized island where you could fold clothes prep clothes uh, lay out your things as you're about to get ready for the day and it had all sorts of storage built into it honestly a phenomenal idea I love it uh, <laughs> I was really blown away 
the rest of the house was really cool too. So as you walk out the back door, they had this giant sliding glass window that goes across the whole back wall. And um, I really like the idea of the sliding glass doors. I think the biggest inconvenience with it is having to slide it open just so you can get in and out. And I think they got they had a, um, a great solution for this. So the far right panel actually swings open like a door and can also fold up into the rest of the panel like a sliding glass door. So it kind of takes away that, that inconvenience that really is the only downside to having one of those, those really cool sweeping doors. Um, and then on top of that, they did the backyard out really nicely too. So they have an oversized porch and a covered patio area. And the covered patio area, they actually netted in and then they put a, uh, they put a fireplace, so again, with the decorative hearth and everything like that, had the nice natural stone going up the, from floor to ceiling. You had a wet, wet bar on one side and a gas stove on the other. Um, really, honestly, it was a really nice setup. They had, it was wired for lighting. It was wired for uh, a fan. I'm pretty sure I saw a wiring set up for a TV out there as well. Honestly, like that, I think that's great because like in Texas, you don't get a lot of time to be outside during the year, uh, comfortably at least. So having some kind of protection from the elements gives you more time that you can actually spend outside, which is a really nice thing. I, I, I feel like that's the main reason people live out of the city is just so that way they can go outside and enjoy the fresh air and the environment. So these guys really had the setup for that. And, um, you know, if you're thinking of moving out into the rural area, rural areas, uh, that might be something that you might want to consider as well. So we've talked about city living and we've talked about country living, uh, but let's be honest, the vast majority of you guys are probably looking for something in like a suburban neighborhood. Um, uh, and that's fine, like I live in a little cookie cutter neighborhood on the north side of Fort Worth. Nothing crazy, not a lot going on, and that's fine, I like it that way. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do too, which is why I brought you guys here. And here may not look like much at the moment because on the left side of me over there, you can see that that's just like a trail and some wood. But as I pan the camera around this way, you're gonna see a lot of these nice little suburban houses. And where I am right now, this is uh, Walsh Ranch. So Walsh is what we like to call a master planned community. And what that means is basically like the developer and the builders, they all get together and they make this multi-year plan where they, you know, in this case, they've planned out thousands of houses and all these amenities and everything to create this giant community with all these lovely little houses in it. And they did a great job. Uh, Walsh is a great example of this because this one was basically built from the ground up on like fiber internet and around all of these crazy amenities and everything like that. Like they've got a, a multiple pools, they've got fitness centers, they've got a little supermarket over there or like a convenience store. Um, they have a zip line apparently somewhere. I haven't seen the zip line but they keep advertising it so if you guys know where that is pop it down in the comments so i can go see it because i'm pretty sure they're lying about the zip line but all the rest of the stuff they do have is really cool um but basically suffice to say is like just because you're living the cookie cutter lifestyle doesn't mean your experience has to be cookie cutter and this is an awesome example of that uh there's also a couple of others if this isn't really your bag we've got uh north star up north of fort worth obviously we've got morningside just a hop skip and a jump down the road over there uh there's tavolo park in the south by ben brook there's a bunch of different options whenever it comes to master plan communities in fort worth so if that's something you're interested in you're definitely going to want to check out some of these because there's a lot going on here So with all the different areas that we've been talking about, I've left out one very notable exception. And that's because while there's a lot of overlap in the Venn diagram between this location and some of the others we've talked about, I feel like it's unique enough that it deserves its own category. And you may see some of these interesting looking houses in the background over here. I know some of them may not be much to look at, and that's because the people who are living here, they're not living here for the house. They're living here for what the house is next to. And what the house is next to is actually just behind us. So let me tell turn around real quick and I apologize it's very windy here as well but yeah 
water <laughs> lots of it uh specifically this is lake worth um so lake worth is a really interesting one uh it's on the north side of fort worth it's kind of attached kind of not attached to eagle mountain lake but there's a bunch of different water features around the fort worth area so as far as lakes go we have obviously lake worth eagle mountain lake we have uh granbury lake or lake granbury we've got lake arlington there's lake Louisville, lake grapevine lake ray hubbard uh joe pool lake there's a bunch of different bodies of water around Fort Worth, and luckily that's because of the Trinity River. Now, the Trinity River is this big winding river that goes all through downtown Fort Worth and a lot of other parts of the city in the Metroplex, and it uh, deposits into some of these big lakes like this. And that's really cool for the Fort Worthians because that gives them the opportunity to, one, enjoy all of this cool water and all it has to offer, but on top of that, gives lots of prospects for real estate options. So if somebody wants to live next to a lake, there's plenty of options around the DFW area that you honestly may not expect in Texas, because I know a lot of people, when they think Texas, they may think cacti and tumbleweeds and stuff like that. And don't worry, there's plenty of that out west if that's what you're looking for. But if you're looking for something a little bit more aquatic, we have plenty of options. That being said, like you probably saw some of these very interesting looking houses in the background earlier uh, over here. Let me actually turn it, the cameras, or the lighting's a little bit better. I'm here actually at um, at Camp Joy Park on the north side of the lake here. And some of these houses, while they're not built on the water, are very close to the water and the land that they're on is very valuable. Unfortunately, a lot of people dump all their money into the land and don't do a great job building the house. So if you are looking at picking up a piece of lakefront property, make sure you give us a call because we have seen it all. Uh, believe it or not, and that's a cute little rhyme there. I'm gonna hang on to that one. But <laughs> these uh, these houses can be kind of hit or miss. So if you need an expert eye, let us know. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Obviously, we can't cover every type of lifestyle there is in Fort Worth. There's just so many to pick from, but I really wanted to touch on some of the bigger ones and more notable ones as well. And if there's any that I missed that you would love to see a video on, go ahead, jump down in the comments, let us know, because that's why we make these videos is for your guys' knowledge and entertainment and to help people out who might be moving into the area. Uh, but remember, as always, if you're looking to buy or sell, keep calm and call Tom. Thank you.